Hey, welcome to another episode of Dave's Imaginations. Today, we're going to take a look at the top free digital assets, top free things you can use for your Dungeons and Dragons game. This is things I use, I use all the time. I'm going to have a top 10 list, but a little hint, there's going to be bonus content. I couldn't restrict myself. I got like 15 or 16 of these things. So we're going to go through them all right after this. Stay with me. First of those honorable mention things is Reddit. Here you're in my personal Reddit account and you can see in here you have a number of groups you can join. I have a Steelers fan, I got dad jokes, and you can see all these different things here, investing, all these things you can look and join and get information. Here's battle maps. And if we go into my search and we can search on something, here's battle maps, uh, and you can find that there's a watchtower and you can just click on that image and hey this is a good way to find wine find maps tips advice you can post things to get advice so reddit is the first of my honorable mentions next in my honorable mentions is night cafe artificial intelligence created images uh it's i love this one because it's free or virtually free you get a bunch that you at initial when you initially join in and then you get like five more every day you can put in a prompt five armed demonic monstrosity in dark woods i scroll down and i click generate image it takes a few seconds to think about it but very quickly it comes back with your images you can view your creations it gives you four different options you can click through those and see which ones you like the best download those to your desktop and you have an image similar is an ai text generator at beta.openai.com here i'm putting in a prompt uh, to ask to describe the monster under underneath my bed and you type in your text prompt you hit generate and it comes back with a description in this case it says the monster under your bed is a large slimy creature with jagged teeth and glowing eyes it has four long scaly legs and a long wriggly tail its skin is a dark midnight blue and its claws are razor sharp it lets out a low menacing growl whenever somebody approaches. So that's kind of fun. You can use it as a as a descriptor. You can put any type of prompt in there and I'll give you back a descriptor. And if you don't like it, you can just hit that refresh button and it'll give you a new result. So that, I think that's pretty cool. And then that is that is our AI text generator. Next on my honorable mention list is OBS. Here you can see I have my list of all the different screens I have and I can show here's my logo the Christmas version of my logo I also have my intro video I use and there's my IDOT camera hello as well as a corner camera I also have my intro screen my fly-in screen with the dragon coming in and blowing fire across my logo had fun putting that together. So that's OBS, free software, lets me put my screens together. Here's my game layout board. If you watch my Thursday night videos, you would see this view with my map in the background. So that's OBS. Next is iMovie, and I guess technically this isn't free. <laughs> it came with my Mac, so I didn't pay any extra money for it. But in this is where I put all my clips, I put my videos in, I can pull in different images, and I can mesh them together to put my videos. Here I'm creating a recap video. Here I pull in a video into my timeline and I can modify the Ken Burns effect. That is, after the video gets pulled in, how I can show where the, I start my view of that image to where I end my view of that image. Then finally I can save the movie to a spot I know so that I can update it or I can upload it to programs such as YouTube. Next to my honorable list is a website called Fantasy Name Generator. 
And in Fantasy Name Generator, they give you a bazillion, I swear, bazillion different lists of names. Here I put in, uh, I go to their list of fantasy and folklore. You can see all the different tabs. I select dragon names. And when I do, you can see that uh, there's a whole initial list, but then you can get male names, neutral names, and female names. Next, I go back to the fan the list and I select uh, show me rook names. And here it goes. It just returns back a bunch of rook. Rain beak. So that is fantasy name generator. I use it all the time to come up with names. Number 10. And now number 10 on my list is YouTube. In YouTube, I have a number of YouTubers I watch for Dungeons and Dragons contents, for advice and, and uh, content that I use to prepare for my game. Here I'll go through and... There's Sly Flourish's Lazy D&D Talk Show. There's the How to Be a Great GM channel. Russian Dungeon Master's Dungeon Craft. Here are the Dungeon Dudes. Then one of the first D&D content providers was Nerdarchy. And then the DM's Lair is another one I like quite a bit, as well as Triet Monk Temple. And then, of course, I wouldn't exist without YouTube as my channel's on here. I have all sorts of content I've put out as reviews, as well as live videos that I put out every Thursday, followed by recaps usually a day or two later. So that is YouTube, and I couldn't exist without it. Number nine. At number nine, I have Google Docs. And this is where my one of my players is kind enough to take notes during session. And we have a log of every game we've played for the last, oh, year, two years. And that's in here as well as so Google Docs free document. I can share with my team and, and they have, everyone has access to it that go look up things if i have find a resource i can put it here they can take a look at it so at number nine i have google docs very valuable very powerful i enjoy it quite a bit number eight next on my list is dm's guild or also rpg guild as they're kind of one in the same just different front ends to them in here i can go in and i can search for any number of topics i can go look for resource guides i can look for extra material on a per particular setting and uh, i put in here there's all third party content they can expand on the D, D universe dm's guild is mostly D, D related stuff as opposed to rpg guild which is more uh, not all D, &D content stuff as we look here in a second we'll see the list of i'll show you my library i got some 182 different documents here yeah i've probably been on dm's guild for i don't know 10 years so that's a collection of 10 years worth of stuff between maps and 3d stl files that i might have gotten from the rpg guild that has more than just D, D stuff so a full collection of things i go in here if i need the extra resources like i said so i really appreciate drive through uh rpg and dm skill number seven at number seven is mpcgenerator.com at mpcgenerator.com you go in and you can generate uh, just click the button and you get a random npc and here we can see Donald Glory Bluff, an 18-year-old male human trader. And it gives you personality traits and a plot hook. That's pretty cool. And, but you could go more. You could slide in there and you can pick your, uh, let's say, you could your race, class, alignment, plot hooks, <laughs> occupation, cl class, or profession. And here I picked a class and a bard. And now I generate and i get uh this jade laughing steel a 14 year old female human bard and it gives all sorts of quirky traits and then a fun plot hook so i i love this because it has uh, a lot of background a lot of stuff i can use as a dungeon master to just put an npc into the game also i could use it as a character as if i were trying to create a player character i could use this as a foundation for my my player character. So I really appreciate MPC Generator. I used it quite a bit. Number six. 
of my games are digital based as my players all have tokens on the screen. I also put tokens for my monsters and to do this a lot of my tokens I create using token stamp. In here I can pull an image off of my hard drive and put it into their software and then from their software I can move that image around. I can select a border, I can change the border tint, the border color and then I can uh, save that back to my computer and then I can import it into my, my virtual tabletop. Number five. Next on my list is AIDED.org. And this website has a bunch of maps that I use in my games. My games are based in Faerun and most often on the Sword Coast. And this, this particular website has fantastic maps. As uh, you can go in and in that map, they have all these uh, locations of interest. You simply click on it and it gives you a little bit of detail and that'll give me a launch point. I can throw that in a different website and get more information. But another thing I love about this is you can, uh, it has a distance calculator. So you can click on one location and hit like a control D on the keyboard and then click between them and it can give you the distance between those two points and how long it takes you by foot, by uh, fast or slow, uh, by ship, a sailing ship, or even dragon or flying. So uh, this A-I-D-E-D d.org uh, for maps i use it all the time zooming out here i can see the all of Faerun. it's got quite a bit and i really appreciate this number four as i mentioned previously most of my games are digital i have a tv <laughs> set into my table and my players have tokens within that the map the software i use is foundry virtual tabletop here i'm getting into virtual on a virtual tabletop but number four on my list of the free digital assets are all the modules i have added to the foundry most of which are free and specifically the one i point out here is um as mythic and mythic is uh an oracle that can be used to answer questions i found a point on a number a uh, dice tray dice so nice um a D, &D um emulator that the uh, this the module that brings in content from D, &D beyond uh, these are all free and no cost and i can bring them into my virtual tabletop here i give a little demo of the mythic oracle i pick i give a question and i say how likely it is here i'm going to say very unlikely and i can how chaotic is this game at the moment here i get a okay, high chaos level of five and the question I'm going to ask is, can my party have a short rest? And so I put in the question into the Oracle here. Then I click yes is a favorable response. I go ahead and click the yes. And then I show it to the chat and it will tell me the result of the answer to my question. And here the Oracle says, Mythic says, no, the party should not take a short rest. Uh, and if they try to, I might give them a, uh, an encounter. And you can see there's a number of other other things you could use this mythic emulator for such as uh, event checks fate checks all these fun stuff so mythic is mythic emulator mythic oracle is number four on my list of free digital assets amongst all the other modules that i have and here i go show here i show you just the other ones of all those uh, modules i have i only have a few selected i do not run a uh, intensive virtual tabletop it's more for us to be able to look at maps so um, i don't use all the foundry abilities i just have those few number three my third favorite thing my third favorite free digital asset is the website fan forgotten realms wiki I'm in this thing all the time. I call it going down the rabbit hole as I look for information. Here I'm searching Waterdeep and, and I drill into, give me the fan provided community driven content. And they have all sorts of background on Waterdeep. I did a big video 
on Waterdeep not too long ago. I pulled a lot of it straight from this. Here in there, there's blue links and you can pivot. And here I'm in Kalamashan, I pivoted to Kalamashan and I'm reading all the background going deeper and deeper into this rabbit hole as I look at all the background on Kalamashan, the major cities, and then I get in all this information. Uh, many of them have references and this isn't just current 5th edition D&D. This is going all the way back in the history of of D D from earlier editions to uh, fictional uh, books and and video games, they all consider that part of the history of D D. And and so I can go in here and I can read about it. There's way more than I'll ever need. Number two, the second most useful free digital asset that I have is Discord. In Discord, I have a number of text channels, general wingdings, and tabletop games. I also have a couple speech voice channels, general, and my Dark Queen Ascension game. This is where my group gathers uh, when they're remote. They come in here and I go live. Here I go ahead and I think I clicked on the connect and I can share my screen top. Uh, if, if there's some reason and I can share a screen, we can view people. There I am. Hello. And I can also share my screen top here. And this is a backup to if they ever have problems getting on the foundry virtual tabletop. I can, I usually have my screen going live and they can see that also helpful if I ever go to websites instead of just foundry. And so that is my discord, uh, for Dave's imaginations. Number one. So the number one useful free digital asset to me is just simply Google. Here I go into Google, I just pipe in Narenvain and I get all these articles on Narenvain, more than I could ever read. And then often I'm looking for an image and here are the hundreds of images of Narenvain. I can click on one, I can pivot, I can pull these in, I can save these to my images to my desktop, I can find maps related to Narenvain. And so here's a Hero Forge mini. I didn't know there was a Hero Forge Mini. So I could go in and I could probably download that Hero Forge Mini to, to my, my account. So uh, the number one most useful free digital asset for me is Google. I use it all the time. I probably use it every day, multiple times. I love me some Google. So that's my list. That's my number one. There's my top 10. So there's my top 10. Tell me what you think. Do you agree with the, these lists? Do you like or dislike one of the ones? Is there something better? Is there one of the items on the list that you disagree with? And perhaps you have a better option. I'd love to see that in the comments below. The community would love to see that in the comments below. Please leave it. And uh, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, would you please hit that like and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you find this useful. I'm hoping, I'm hoping someone's watching this video and they found, hey, they something they hadn't heard of. Eh. The more experienced people probably have seen all of these before, but maybe not. Maybe there's someone new watching this video and they saw something they hadn't learned, seen before. And I'm hopeful that you can use this. And um, as I said, share your comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I'll respond to everything I can. And until next time, I just say, take care.